Rabies is a true horror movie virus, which is 100% preventable if acted upon in time. However, once a victim of this virus shows the first symptoms, the chances of survival are nearly 0%, with only 6 people recorded to have survived the virus after the onset of symptoms. Although well known, many are unaware of exactly what this virus does to its victims, and the both fascinating and disturbing ways it literally manipulates its host for its own benefit. Unfortunately, for those infected who show the first symptoms of rabies, we still have no solution today, except to wait safely for the virus to take its course. In this video, we will increase your anxiety by showing you how this non-living particle is, in fact, pure evil, and how it manipulates its hosts for the purpose of its reproduction and spreading. This video is made strictly for educational purposes, and knowing how this virus functions and how to protect yourself in case of contact with a rabid animal can save your life. Let's begin. 59,000 people die from rabies each year, and 40% of them are, unfortunately, children in underdeveloped countries of Asia and Africa. However, even in more developed countries, this virus has not been eradicated, and there are various cases and examples of its occurrence in the most fascinating and horrifying ways. The rabies virus takes its host through several phases, each terrifying and designed only in the virus's favor. We will start from the very method of infection, which from the start shows us how terrible this virus is. It does not spread through coughing, food, or water. But, as you know, through a bite or scratch from an infected animal or person, precisely when the saliva of the infected, mostly through violent means, enters the organism of a new victim. Also, infection can occur through the eyes, nose, and mouth when coming into contact with infected tissue or saliva. However, this is quite rare. Now, after a terrifying start in itself, the virus slowly multiplies at the bite site, seeking the nearest nerves of the peripheral nervous system, by which it will slowly begin its journey to its main goal, the brain of the host. This all happens slowly, purposefully to avoid detection by the immune system. This first stage is called the incubation stage, and it marks the time spent between the bite and the appearance of the first symptoms in the host. This period lasts between one and three months, and there are cases of symptoms appearing even after four days or six years after infection. The bite site and the size of the wound play a large role in the speed of symptom onset, as the virus's main goal is the brain. So in the case of a wound received closer to the brain or larger nerves, symptoms will show much earlier. Also, the size of the wound and the amount of infected saliva in it has a significant impact on the speed of disease development. So in case of contact with a suspicious animal, it is extremely important to immediately wash the wound with soap and water to reduce the amount of virus and immediately seek medical help. Remember, help is possible only before the onset of symptoms, and if you receive adequate therapy within the first few days after the bite, the chances that everything will be okay are nearly 100%. In the opposite case, it's always death, as we said, there are only six recorded successful rabies treatments. So, after the incubation period, the initial symptoms are often nonspecific, such as fever and headache. In this stage, the host can become depressed or extremely excited, symptoms that already show viral disruption of neurotransmission in the brain. These changes the virus causes intentionally to increase its chances of spreading and transitioning to a new host as much as possible. In this stage, the host is melancholic, irritable, and often unaware of themselves and their surroundings. They often wander in an unknown direction and outside their typical circles of movement to spread the virus over a larger geographic area. Of course, aggression often occurs, as the main way for the virus to transition to a new host is through a bite and the entry of infected saliva into the wound of a new host. Thus, the virus causes increased secretion of saliva in its hosts, as well as fear of swallowing and hydrophobia, a fear of water, all in one sick goal, to keep as much saliva full of viruses in the mouth as possible, which is intended for a new victim and to make the chances for a successful new infection as high as possible. In this stage, you can see infected individuals literally panic when faced with water and spasms occurring when trying to swallow. The scene of humans infected with rabies is horrific and hard to watch. It is truly scary what this virus does to its hosts and how it manipulates their bodies. Depending on the type of rabies, in 80% of cases, the next stage comes with aggression and a horrible impact on the brain, and in 20%, it is the paralytic rabies 
where the victim gets paralyzed by contractions of all muscles of the body. As rabies progresses and causes inflammation of the brain and meninges, symptoms can include paralysis, anxiety, insomnia, confusion, agitation, abnormal behavior, aggression, paranoia, terror, and hallucinations. Anxiety and insomnia quickly ensue. The mind becomes clouded with confusion, disorienting the individual and obscuring their ability to discern reality. This leads to abnormal behavior, deviating from the individual's usual demeanor and resulting in unpredictable and erratic actions. The virus's influence on the brain's fear and response mechanisms can trigger aggression, transforming the patient into an entity of uncharacteristic hostility. Coupled with paranoia, this aggression causes mistrust of others, causing friends and family to be perceived as potential threats. The sufferer is then consumed by terror, an intense fear that keeps them in a perpetual state of alarm, often accompanied by hallucinations. In the final stage of rabies, the disease takes a devastating toll on the body, leading to debilitating and fatal neurological complications. The virus ravages the central nervous system, disrupting brain and spinal cord functions. This causes inflammation that hampers neurotransmission, breaking down communication within the body. Such disruption results in severe symptoms, including paralysis that can begin in parts of the body and gradually spread, rendering the patient immobile or unable to breathe without assistance. Respiratory failure is a common cause of death among rabies patients. The virus affects the brainstem, responsible for controlling vital functions like breathing, heart rate, and blood pressure, paralyzing respiratory muscles. Additionally, the virus can induce cardiac irregularities, potentially leading to sudden cardiac arrest as the disease progresses. Rabies also triggers systemic stress and a robust immune response, culminating in multi-organ failure as the kidneys, liver, and other essential organs shut down due to the virus's extensive damage. Ultimately, victims of rabies succumb to respiratory failure, cardiac arrest, or multi-organ failure. These symptoms mark a point of no return, sadly leaving modern medicine capable of providing only comfort in the final moments. Throughout history, humanity has employed disturbing techniques and bizarre beliefs in an attempt to combat rabies, ranging from the brutally primitive to the profoundly misguided. Before the advent of modern medicine, these methods were born out of desperation and fear of this fatal disease. One such treatment involved cauterizing the wound with hot metal, based on the theory that intense heat would destroy the virus, preventing it from spreading to the nervous system. In some cultures, the belief that rabies was caused by worms in the tongue led to the horrific practice of cutting open the tongues of infected individuals to extract these mythical parasites. This misconception, deeply rooted in a lack of understanding, resulted in procedures that were not only ineffective, but also exacerbated the victim's suffering. The use of the hair of the dog that bit the victim, either ingested or burned onto the wound, is another example of ancient principles. Among the most bizarre and unsettling beliefs was an Indian belief where it was thought that the infected person was impregnated by puppies, explaining the later symptoms. The breakthrough in the battle against rabies came with the work of Louis Pasteur, who developed the first rabies vaccine. His revolutionary approach after testing on animals was administered to a boy bitten by a rabid dog. After concluding the boy would surely die, and there was nothing to lose by trying the vaccine for the first time on a human. This boy became the first human successfully cured of rabies, ushering in a new era of prevention and understanding. From this point forward, the development of preventive measures took a scientific and effective approach, saving countless lives. Despite these advances, it is a tragic reality that rabies continues to claim thousands of lives each year, predominantly in regions where misinformation and lack of access to preventive measures persist. The fact that this disease, now preventable through vaccination and post-exposure prophylaxis, still results in so much unnecessary loss of life, serves as a reminder of the importance of public health education and the need for widespread understanding of the disease.